next. Hello, welcome back to our live conversation where we are speaking about the intersection between the arts and politics, and not just in Uganda, given the um, emerging phenomenon of artists participating in politics, but also continent-wide and globally, uh, as I have mentioned already. For those that have been following us, uh, I am joined by an able panel of three commentators and uh, active citizens. Uh, to my immediate left, Sarah Chiza and Sigaye, uh, Moses Serugo uh, next to her, and uh, Mr. Ndebesa Mwambusia. So we have covered a number of issues and we would like to um, apologize for the unexpected interruption. It was a technical hitch, but now that we are back online, we'd like to uh, proceed with that conversation. Uh, Mr. Ndevesa, you were just talking about the need to redesign the whole blueprint, the social political blueprint, in order to accommodate a diversity of voices. And uh, Serugo had just asked exactly why it is that we need a top down approach, because that seems like a top-down approach. Uh, women, for instance, who are given a lot of um, constitutional protections seem to, th 30 years later, still show an unwillingness to offer themselves up for leadership. Do they need to be uh, pampered and forced? They, you know, they into, were participated. Into, they were participated. <laughs> they did not uh, have uh, an input uh, or, or out of their volition, it seems. Yeah. So I, I, I want, organic. yeah, I want uh, now to bring in uh, Sarah Chiza, mm -hmm. um, not because of your gender. Am I asking you to to comment on this? But mm -hmm. perhaps that may be a helpful um, um, aspect. You know, why is it that we are not seeing as many women, even among the empowered, educated, liberated uh, sections of the gender, being interested in politics? Is it because of, of the aggressive, uh, divisive, and hostile nature of politics? Mm. Or is it because of uh, the absence of a substantive redesign that Mr. Ndebesa has mooted? First of all, while I want to appreciate Mr. Ndebesa's um, suggestion and proposal that, mm. uh, for instance, the women should be put in, and other, all these discriminations and everything. Mm -hmm. I also well, kind you have, of... You have eight mayors without a woman. <laughs> That's true. But I want... I also That's seek, unacceptable. I know, and I agree, but I want to... I seek to defer a bit in we should allow them, because if you've seen what has happened to Parliament, President Museven has used women to actually pass laws. Because it has been given, has participated then. Mm. Because it has been given, they go to parliament. They think they went there to act because of President Museven, not the law, and mm. not the understanding <coughs> of the relevance and importance of their participation. Mm -hmm. So, twenty years down the road, where we've had UPE, even if it's questionable, where we've had many women in terms of quality, not, not mm. the motive, mm. but the quality. These women who have been in parliament, because there is also a generation of the Miriam Atembe's, Winnie Bianima, yeah. who came, a lot of them competed fairly with the men. Mm -hmm. A number of them came and they participated and they were empowered to participate. And you can see their input. I miss those women. I also don't like the women, most of the women today in parliament. There are women who came like Alaso Alice. I think she came on the gender ticket, and then later she went and competed with men. Mm -hmm. And you see that she is a politician who understands why she went there. She is serving. Mm -hmm. There are people who went there to pick salaries. Even if I'm pro-women, I don't want that kind of woman. So if a person is going to be allowed to come and become a mayor because they are going to form numbers, no. But let, let me ask, just keep it there. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see, the, 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 the whole affirmative action and the politics has been distorted. True. Those, the women were supposed to be given a platform, mm. say for 10 years, on affirmative action, and yes. then you get off. True. Because you have been given a profile, True. you have the funds, True. you can compete with men. And the but now it has become a tool 
for control and therefore they are there indefinitely yes so i appreciate okay. what you what you're proposing if only it is used for that purpose and motive sarah but but can i ask you to now loop in the aspect of artists i first also yeah, wanted to say something before mm -hmm. i wanted to say that if i am a woman today mm -hmm. and i speak the way i speak I don't want to participate in Uganda's politics because I am a mother. I don't want to be beaten and my breasts out and I'm stripped naked. That is part of why women are not participating. But also the commercialization of politics where it requires a lot of money and a number of women are not that corrupt or do not have that kind of backing. Mm. But okay, you asked me the question. Yeah, I wanted you to loop in the aspect of politics because we are now uh, looking at <coughs> ways, yes, mm. ways of... Uh, collating, coalescing mm. various mm. voices mm. so that uh, instead of having artists mm. who have a, a following based on populism, mm. simply participating in politics on the basis of that populism, we can create structures that mm. are sustainable and institutionally grounded that can allow artists, women, mm. all other uh, specific groups to participate there. Actually, I agree mm. with, Pro, with Mr. Devesa mm -hmm. when he said that actually there is a need for us to actually have structures or support systems mm -hmm. that help have um, people who are participating, who are informed. Because you see, today we are talking about the artists. And for me, the artist has always been an artist. There is no bigger politician than Bob Marley. He didn't have to go to parliament, but he was a politician because he was using his art to actually comment and reflect the needs of society and everything, like a dube. Yeah. Those are politicians, even if they're artists. But I want to talk about what we were talking about when people when we went offline. And he was saying that there's a need to redesign. I would like, actually, when time permits and he's talking, for him to actually give me some of the things he thinks need to be done to redesign. Because it's very, very important that we redesign. It's not just the artists. Today we are talking about the artists because Bobby wants to run for president. But we've had journalists. We've had many other. If you go and start looking at all the politicians, most of them, there are these politicians who are like Mao Nobat, who has always aspired. Mm -hmm. If you look at Obote from when he was uh, the president, the grandfather was a uh, chief. It doesn't mean that everybody who has to come. But you see that that kind of grooming into politics. Then you look at people who come today because they are popular, because of popular culture and everything, and the disadvantages. Not that people like Schwarzenegger have not worked, because mm -hmm. the California question now, everybody, they even want to sell it nationally. But who is that quality of politician? Mm -hmm. And there's something we are talking about in the break. When people <coughs> were doing Tubonga now, Bobby Wine did not go. Chameleon was more popular than Bobby Wine before that. And that was the end of Chameleon. He's struggling now. He went to DP, didn't work. Why? Because the public understood that there is a president who has offered them 30 years where he's been promising them things and they've not happened. So they do not yet have the political understanding of interrogating other things. That's why Bobby Wine became very, very critical in the Toji Kwatako campaign and in the WhatsApp because he used the language that people could understand and people could relate to because politics is culture. Even when you're talking about democracy, because uh, Mr. Mdevesa was saying we need democracy. Which democracy? Because democracy should also be domesticated because it is mm. culture. It should speak to those people. So now when we are talking about building those, let us look at all the politicians we have now. Why did they go to parliament? To do what? To eat. If people <laughs> understood, majority of them, if people, if the masses understood what a politician should do, mm. even the artists would be okay because they would go there and serve the way the public rejected the politicians who went and bongad with mm -hmm. the president. So we need to create, part of that is actually creating a critical mass, speaking to the people. There was a, a something doing what, rounds on WhatsApp and someone was saying, the Ugandan who is not concerned about the issues as long as the woman is working as a donkey and they can <laughs> get food and everything. I don't know if you saw that dossier. Mm. It, needs, it means that for as long as our public does not understand what is at stake, what they need to do. We will continue having artists or not 
politicians who are not up to the mark. How do we build that? Is it the education? Because churches are no longer as relevant as they used to be now. Is it the churches? What are some of the things that we need to need together to create that kind of populace that understand and demands and the politicians will offer mm. if mm. it is? Okay. Thank you, Sarah. I would like to remind our audience that we are receiving questions from you. So in the uh, comment thread, please post your question direct it to a particular member of our panel so that we can put it to them. We are continuing with our conversation on the arts and politics and how this is unfolding slowly uh, given our upcoming or ongoing digital election. Uganda decides 2021. I mean it. Yes, Just sir. building on that, when we say, when, for, for instance, Mr. Ndevesa was saying mm. that, um, uh, for instance, people are not participating in, their, in the budget, mm -hmm. that feeds back to what we are saying, that it's because the populace doesn't understand. At a village level, LC1, we, we, they are supposed to participate up to, poly, uh, up to the parish, then it builds to the sub-county and district. But do they, does the populace know that? When does it happen? Because the next nine months are for that, and it is provided for but by don't, law don't, and in the constitution. Sarah, you don't really expect uh, a government that is intent on retaining power through a disempowered population to actually pump life into these structures that are supposed to wake people up. I, I won't allow you to respond to that now. <laughs> Thank you. Now, but I'll, I'll try to, to rope in Moses. Yes. Here we go. Uh, she talks about this Tubonganawa phenomenon, mm -hmm. which for those who do not know was uh, just a cluster of uh, mm. popular uh, music artists who, in the Mugo. last election. Mm. Yes, looking for mm. Mugo. Mm. Maybe some of them were, were ideologically Genuine. convinced, really? huh? wow. such okay. as the, the supposed uh, silent one. majority, <laughs> uh, the silent majority poster boy, uh, mm. Bebe Ko. It was a show me the money scenario if mm. you watch mm. Jerry Maguire. W would, you, would you say that uh, Bebe Cool, who mm. seems to be uh, Bobby Wine's opposite number mm. for all intents and purposes, mm -hmm. uh, is he someone without principles? Does he um, embody? Mm or does he uh, represent mm. the artist without a conscience? I want to respect the fact that he believes in the candidate, I mean with the candidate's ideology mm. that, that he believes in. I don't know if things like him being a tuberculosis ambassador <laughs> are trappings of you being uh, in support of uh, the, the said uh, um, uh, candidate. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> mm. that's my response to that. Because okay. um, I'm looking at Bobby Wine, who, he, he, you, you know, um, should follow the whole grooming thing because his dad is Bidandi Sali. We know Bidandi Sali as a very <coughs> maybe astute politician, you know, um, so to speak, away from his football uh, filia. And uh, I, I would have expected the apple not to fall so far from. You know the the, 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 the tree. Where is the in tree? That, uh, the tree is, is bidand. No, <laughs> oh, where is the tree? Interesting question. Yes, <laughs> the, the last time I heard about the tree, uh, the tree was asking for medical aid from the person it was opposing. Mm. So um, uh, I don't know. I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll leave it at that. The whole I I I I don't want to think he understands the whole silent majority mm. phenomenon, uh, phenomenon, so to speak. He's also just another more go artist. Mm. Mm. I want to imagine who's trying to rope in peers, like-minded peers, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mwambusia, I want you to comment on uh, something that has come up, but we haven't uh, yet delved into it at length. Mm. The issue of censorship and uh, press freedom, uh, as well as artistic freedom. Do you think that the the, the show of interest on the part of artists to now jump into the waters of mainstream politics is an unintended consequence of censorship on, on the part of the state. Thank you. Um, by and large, let's not stereotype the musicians or the artists. Okay. <laughs> uh, as people who are also not doing something to emancipate mm. to the ballet, there is some um, emancipation art and emancipation uh, 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 musical or whatever the case may be. It is there. Uh, but as you have put it, 
It is also suppressed by the existing legal framework, POMA, Public Order Management Act, as a legal framework, discourages some people from uh, making comedy and uh, singing and doing certain things that would be emancipating, not hegemonical. And that one, it, is, uh, it, it can only be addressed in the political struggles. Because you are not going to talk as if people don't know. Those who are in power know what is going on. Only that we do not have space to make reforms. So there is an ongoing talk, and people should talk. I, I haven't seen even many people talking about POMA, that when I come into power and make sure the first 100 days, we must remove POMA. They are also they are always talking about bringing out Museven, Museven, Museven. Yeah. When there is this POMA thing which should be highlighted, because uh. the legal framework also curtails that ability uh, uh, and opportunity of artists to bring out certain things for emancipation. I needed to, to, to point out that. Yeah. But still again on the stereotype, the musicians are trying in their own way. The population tries in its own way. You have talked about entertainment music, by the way. None has mentioned about Museven. Museven is his Mpenkoni <laughs> and the other songs. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they were entertaining and they helped to, 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 to mobilize political mm -hmm. support. Mm -hmm. But since then, wait, since mm -hmm. then, People have put torch into it. Now there is a certain vehicle. These yes. big, big vehicles mm -hmm. which are called Mpenkoni. Mm. Uh, 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 and it is not complementary mm. yeah. when they are talking mm. about Mpenkoni. Mm. It is actually ridiculous. Mm. Those who have Mpenkoni yeah. as people who have maybe got irrigated waste. Mm. So the population out there is also aware. And they are using uh, the, the, the media to to to... to uh, and, and the music and entertainment, but also uh, trying to ridicule and bring out those things. You know, art, as I said at the beginning, is a magnifying glass. Mm, yes. It magnifies some things which people don't talk about. Uh, we have got very many things here which are called elephants in the room. <laughs> the phrase, the idiom elephant in the room, is something that is rooming that, but people do not want to name it mm. or touch it. Sure. Now the artists help us to identify the elephant in the room. <laughs> yes. Even when the elephant in the room and people are not seeing it, mm. the artists help us to see that. And we need courageous artists who can help mm. us now to see the elephant in the room. In other words, mm. even the region at one time was used to control people and dominate. Mm. But then we have got liberation theology which helped to liberate the, the oppressed. Mm -hmm. So we are, calling for, uh, we are calling upon the artists also to come up with emancipation artist. Uh, emancipation art, yes. sorry. Mm -hmm. Liberation art. And uh, try to make us talk about the elephants in the room. Mm -hmm. We have got very many elephants in the room in Uganda, mm -hmm. but when we, people want to talk about them, they run away from them. Mm -hmm. But I thought this one would do... Uh, the, the, the artist can help us. Mm. But finally, let me talk about redesigning a bit. Uh, but I'm more or less going to repeat myself. <laughs> there are very many, they are mainly, these are the theoretical level. I know some audience will pick and some will not, may not pick. But let me say it here. There are mainly three principal elements of democracy in the contemporary era. We have got representative democracy. This is the one which we have now, representing somebody, and for five years, He's representing even when he's not present for you. Mm. He's doing other things. There is deliberative democracy. Deliberative democracy is about talking and uh, where you would have experts who are equal to the members of parliament. Today, people who are equal to members of parliament, the system has deliberately disenfranchised them. Mm. Why? One of the laws, for example, public servants like myself and others, are the ones who are equal to the members of parliament and can and uh, uh, can counterbalance their powers mm. but then they say you must resign from your job before you contest then you calculate when i resign definitely when you resign and stand special on some other tickets you will not come back yeah. so you say but <laughs> chances that i will go yeah. it's a, it's a half <laughs> so uh, you, there's, you, there's so, a disincentive instead mm -hmm. there should have yeah, it is a disincentive mm -hmm. instead the law should have said that you 
go on and paid leave. Yes. For that period when you will be in campaigns, in case you don't succeed, you come back at your job. Yes. You would have very many of us equal to these members of parliament, those who can debate them, discuss with them, who have the same brain capacity yeah. to discuss with them. Now you discourage them, then you remain with the marketplace. Uh, there is a book there which was written by Mamdan who was saying scholars in the marketplace. Yeah. Now we have got politics in the marketplace. <laughs> And once you have politics in the marketplace, mm. you have got art in the marketplace, mm. then you know the, 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 the rules, the principles of the market. The principles of the market yeah, is profit maximization. Yeah, okay. And that is why I like this boy who did say that people vote me so that I can also go there and eat like those who are eating. At least he that did. one is bringing out the <laughs> elephants in the room yeah. and in a humorous way. way. Okay. in the humorous way. Mm. So if we can design a, 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 de our democratic principles so that we have got a fine combination, a fine mix between the liberative democracy, popular democracy, and representative democracy, even when we have to, to have representative for five years and they, they go there and they, uh, ask for COVID money and whatever, at least we know that there is a fallback position mm. in the deliberative democracy that is institutionalized and constitutionalized so that we can balance all these forces. Otherwise, we are now living in a marketplace, mm. in a market society, in a consumer society, and these are the ears of market politics, where you are going to have people, not because of their capabilities and the capacities inherent in them, but because of their capacity to buy votes. Mm. Trump passed through because he was a billionaire. And yeah. we are going to have more billionaires <laughs> in parliament and in the state houses rather than the people who have got ideas on which they stand for, yeah. which they pursue, which is for the public good, for the, the greater good. Mm. And instead, we are going to have selfish people in the parliament. And that is a problem of liberal representative democracy that we must somehow curtail. Mm. Wow. Solutions. Mm. Solutions seem to be uh, the the elusive thing, <laughs> you know, the elephant in the room, yes. so to say, if I may borrow your analogy, mm. uh, Mr. Ndevesa. Mm. Um, my question to you all would be, is the problem that artists, like any other interest group mm. in our fragile democracies, mm -hmm. are not organized as mm. a unique group you see? Who are they, the artists yes. are not really organized. They don't have their own groups. They don't have unions, trade unions or labor movements or whatever you may call it, you know, that band them together and allow them to coalesce, <laughs> allow them to sort of streamline what it is that mm. they stand for and therefore to harness the, the collective power they have and therefore they can be picked off one by one. One can be paid, you know, a few million shillings to sing a song in favor of this party. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the next day, you know, another one is saying, the, the closest they have to that is uh, this um, events promoter who is now <laughs> becoming more infamous, you know. <laughs> he claims to be the, the de facto uh -huh. spokesperson, you know, of, mm -hmm. of the arts industry. And the, the middleman between the poor uh, beggar-like artists and, mm -hmm. and the person who doles out a quick one hand out. It is partly the problem of our education system because yeah. the modern yeah. artists, the current artists, mm. have gone to school. Mm. But in our curriculum, we do not teach social justice. Mm. So there is no value that unites them. They are united by eating. Mm. They also want to eat. They want money. But if the artists also had a value system like we had in uh, Europe, by the way, Europe is better than America in using artists in the betterment of society, in governance of society. Mm -hmm. Those who could go to theaters and dramas and whatever, and they are informed by a certain idea, which idea is to critique mm -hmm. society so that it can progress. Mm -hmm. Because they can come together. Actually, in history, we learned something to do in Europe in the 19th century, uh, the, whole, the Unholy Alliance. You can mm -hmm. actually have that Talk, th th that group we are talking about collectively, which would be unholy, an unholy alliance 
of people who are going to have artists yeah. for promoting privilege, yes. not undermining uh, 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 not Authority. undermining privilege, mm -hmm. not for social justice, mm -hmm. not greater good, but for mm -hmm. self-interest. Mm -hmm. So they can come together. I saw the other day they were trying to come together and they were they, they were almost scrubbed mm -hmm. at Karenda House. Yeah. Uh, they were trying to also to give their voice. But I think the artists in, in various ways, we have got artists who are writers. Mm -hmm. I think the organizers of this uh, symposium are uh, in a bookstore. Yeah as writers but you can write in favor of privilege mm. or write in favor of social justice mm. we have got comedians i have listened to a few i don't normally listen mm. but most of them are for entertainment value mm. not education value but mm. some are for education and awareness value for these elephants mm. that are in the room mm. we have got cartoonists who sometimes spray into into something <laughs> we have got other artists uh, they are trying, but also that atmosphere under Poma, mm -hmm. which must be removed, so that we have got artists who are also artists of emancipation. Mm -hmm. And then we, we, they go to Parliament, also, you see the challenge that we have artists who have gone to Parliament. There is nothing wrong with artists going to Parliament. Mm -hmm. I would want them to go there, mm -hmm. but I would want an artist to go to Parliament when he is informed by the idea mm -hmm. of social justice, mm -hmm. not privilege. Mm -hmm. But mm. you find that most of them who have gone there are for privilege and they rode on the backs of this uh, okay. market, market mm. politics, mm. not ideas. Mm. But you can go for ideas. I mean, there are artists who have even sung mm. about human rights, mm. Mm. human rights issues, mm. justice issues. Mm. If they could be informed, if we could have an opportunity to have seminars for artists, mm. next time you, the organizers, please, Mm. Let's have artists mm. and dialogue so that they could pick a issue from some of us mm. so that they have an idea for which they stand for mm. and they are ready to sing for it at all costs mm. so that we can change mm. things and transform mm. humanity mm. for a better. Otherwise, mm. Africa has remained behind because we have not had the agency mm. of some groups of people. Mm. Now the artists have got an opportunity. They are privileged mm. in the sense that mm. people listen to them. Mm. And therefore, they have got big audiences. Mm. Their mm. messages can go to very many people. Mm. If their message could be informed mm. by social justice, mm. not by privilege, mm. then they could be an agent, mm. an institution, a trade through which mm. Africa could be emancipated mm. and, and it also becomes civilized mm. and it puts its head among civilized mm. nations in the world. Mm. And which, which, mm. which is not so, so, so difficult to do, because when he mentioned the whole social justice thing, mm. it reminded me of UB40, a reggae band that was formed during the Margaret Thatcher era, unemployment benefits 40, because people who were unemployed used to, I'm told, get 40 pounds a week or a month. So this band comes together and they're like a social... Um, justice agenda is to sort of push back or parody this whole unemployment benefits 40 thing. But then they go on and sing a song called There's a Rat in My Kitchen, which is essentially also pushing back or parodying the whole Margaret Thatcher, you know, economics of, 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 of running Britain at, at that time. I, 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 I want to, 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 to presume. So you have an artist like Irene Talley, who in my book or in my mind is actually a social justice artist yes. but because she has to adapt to the economics of the day or economics if you want mm -hmm. has to sing these cheesy meals and bones songs mm -hmm. you know so what would it take to have your irene tally as a social justice um artist, artist. so to speak you know it's because that that's how she started mm -hmm. initially you know she's easy on the ear you know, if, if, if you're not into the whole Bobby Wine thing because maybe he's not so musical, he's just some voice, ear greeting voice that is, you know, singing social consciousness lyrics, but mm. then you have your Irene Tully. How do you get your Irene Tully to, to, to become a social justice ambassador? And then you get um, a critical mass of maybe the, 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 those sorts of people. I was speaking to Philip Matogo um, earlier. You know, and I'll, I'll repeat this, especially when it comes to civic education, because even going into elections, you know, we don't have that much civic education as, as a nation. But then if John Stewart was able to get a voting block 
to probably not vote. The a little comment, a little comment here. Mm -hmm. There is civic education, but mm -hmm. civic education for what? For what? Okay. There is what young ones. <laughs> there are other forms and of civic what education. Yeah. Maybe to what the, end mm. are you civic educating? Mm -hmm. You could be civic mm -hmm. educating mm -hmm. for privileges. Yeah. Well, so no civic education educator. for social justice. Yes. I'm now looking at in, in the social justice lens mm. and trying to get people who are apathetic, like you said, voter apathy people who come election day would rather watch DSTV, you know, that sort of thing, or watch Netflix instead of going out to vote. Mm. But then if John Stewart is the kind of person that is packaging their message, who is the kind of comedian that will appeal to that sort of, you know, voter away from the tribalist, for, from your comedians who just uh, emphasize tribal, you know, jokes or yeah. sexualized, mm. you know, jokes. That is what I think we should be doing, actively going out, you know, to hunt for these artists, especially knowing well that maybe they don't want to get into this whole political bandwagon of your dead wood, like we've seen people who rode on the artist's bandwagon, but are now in the US, have even never, you know, have spent so many de uh, uh, days without going for parliamentary sitting and ordinarily would be recalled, sure. but even the... That the population that they represent is not conscious enough to know that I can recall a uh, my, my member of parliament mm. on account of the fact that they've not attended this number of sittings. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Mm. Uh, I would like to build on that, but I would like to 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 first of all say that getting that kind of people of person mm. artist Irene Tab mm. eh, to do what Bobby does. Mm will also require to go into what Mr. Andelisa earlier said, mm -hmm. which is the market. Because people mm -hmm. have to survive. Mm -hmm. So how do we create a, 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 a citizenry mm -hmm. that has interest mm -hmm. in this? And it might not be easy. So it takes us back mm -hmm. to what Mr. Andelisa said of how do we hit a balance mm -hmm. of bringing in the this kind of world in entertainment and mm. picking interest. And for me, a platform like this is very critical. So I want to commend, uh, I want to commend the African studies. I want to create, commend all these other platforms because what COVID has also served to do is I've seen very many people having these kinds of conversations. conversations yeah. How do we continue with these kinds of conversations? How do we change our education? And mm. there is no, Talk, no way we talk about this without actually also talking about the family mm -hmm. and the kind of people that they are raising. Mm -hmm. uh, how are we raising our children? Mm -hmm. With what integrity? With what values? We have to talk about the people. Like for instance, when earlier we were off, uh, Mr. Andebesa talked about the heart mm -hmm. and, and the, the mind. mind. Right. For instance, mm -hmm. Buganda and many other, but Buganda has successfully sold <coughs> Buganda in the hearts mm. of people <laughs> even when they are born the they don't know what but they are baganda and there's that mm. nationalism the banyaranda do it a lot mm. uh very very patriotic it's in the heart first mm. then you will say okay let's chase the fox mm. and warn the hen mm. so how do we bring that and i see that cultural leaders have a role to play mm. education institutions have a lot to play civic society has a role to play mm. the media that gives people all this mm. time because they want to pull audiences. They mm. also need to rethink because mm. media is not a business you go into just to get money. It is also a business you go into when you have actually understand that it is service. Mm. So how do we, how does the media balance that? And then when I talk about media, I also want to talk about the public broadcaster and the public media agencies for me i can understand now that there's a problem with uh, with the resources but to have rupini cross and to have Ulumuri close and we and keep quiet that's cutting out a whole section and it was feeding and vision group in as much as it has issues a public entity and you see you can say vision group is not a public entity but 51 percent of the shares are, are, are public so you cannot a government owned so you cannot say that it's no longer public there is there should be some investment mm. in those kinds of things so you can't mm. cut out a section of that mm. because it was informing mm. it was educating it was entertaining and the vision group, thanks to Pike and the people who started it in the mm. beginning, mm. still was trying to make an attempt to be a public entity. Mm. And then, dear President Museveni, the yellow people generally, can you kindly try to understand that UTV, UBC, is not a government of the day station. It has a public role to play. The way BBC, 
does mm -hmm. not serve the government mm -hmm. of the day. And if it could be allowed to function properly and actually financed to do that, because it has all the facilities and everything, but they're also scared. You cannot say that the people of UTV are not good because if there was no UTV, there would be no NTV, there would be no WBS and all these other stations. They built and created those people. But to stay safe, they operate in a manner that they have to act unknowledgeable when they are at UTV. So you're not doing anything to build this nation. That's why the likes of the people who are coming out now will come and communicate. Because the thing about the emergency of these artists also is because the media has been suppressed. But the artists have found ways to communicate. And I go back to how, for instance, Bobby Wine has become mm -hmm. popular. First of all, he has a history of, of, of social justice. Mm -hmm. But then when he comes, he knows how, even when he went to parliament, is Bobby Wine a good legislator? No. Because even when you look at how he legislates or talking about the issues in parliament, he doesn't handle them very well. But he is a good communicator. He has and a tool. He has a Which tool. Is, and he knows how to use it. Yes. Mm. Use it very effectively. Because his talent is in music. Yes. So these it. other politicians we are talking about, what's up, Bureau, you know, the Lord, the jargons that a lay person does not <laughs> understand. Bobby Wine came, Stop domesticated police. the things, related the fight to people, and people came on board. And I've seen another person, Ruta Maguzi. He has mm. gone culture, politically culture. Yeah. So he knows how to send information. Mm. So when all this has been deprived, the people of music, when you close their concerts, they will go online, online. thanks to new media, yeah. they are able to communicate. So people are saying, if the media is no longer giving us this space, if the Bobby Wines are the people who are communicating, they'll go to them. And I'm not saying Bobby Wine is, but he's demonstrated that he, is, he has a heart for service, but can he also have a heart for governance? Would, be, would he know how to run? this government. Maybe he doesn't. What are the other structures that are there, especially since we've lost them mm. in the past yes. few decades? Yeah, and okay. uh, I am sorry to have to take you back, but I feel you haven't actually answered my question, which was on the issue of instead of going to the establishment with a begging bowl <laughs> in hand, and saying, look, we need you to give us more space, we need you to create latitude for us, or Alternatively, instead of uh, joining mainstream politics mm -hmm. and riding the populism wave, mm -hmm. how can artists organize themselves outside of the mainstream political establishment so that they become a force to reckon with even without the politicians endorsing them, even without mm -hmm. the unconscious and uncivically mm -hmm. educated or the civically uneducated population necessarily casting a ballot for them. Perhaps this is not Bobby Wine's burden. Perhaps it will have to be another voice and another face who seeks to take up this particular role mm. and organize collectives. Moses, you mentioned the issue of uh, the London Meet of Poets, mm. which started as a collective, but there are many other poetry collectives. Mm. I know the comedians have Fun Factory, and, mm. which started as collectives, you know, mm. but how can the, these be scaled up, you know? to ensure that while artists are not necessarily uh, snuffed out in terms of individual creativity, but they do politics outside of the political establishment. That is my, my uh, concern. Would any of you want to take it on? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I, I can come in here. Uh, mm. By way even of calling upon uh, some groups of people, social groups of people, and the, mostly the artists, to help us mm. out of this stagnation. We need to transit. Yes to certain levels of democracy and national integration. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the artist should find a way of having a good mix between entertainment value and emancipation value. Mm -hmm. When you are thinking about your, your words or the, the, you, you, you are coming up with a song or a music or a comedy or, comedy or whatever, or cartoon, think about the audience out there and the society that you would want to bring about. Mix it with entertainment and humor, but also emancipation value. Mm -hmm. Two, mix, find a good mix between profit making and social justice and national integration causes. Social justice and national integration causes. Find a good mix. We are calling upon the artists also to play their role, their agency, 
in transforming our society for a better society. After all, when there is a better society, you also add more. Yeah. Then, these things should not remain on the artists themselves. Mm. Actually, basically, it should be us citizens and the voters mm. and the public generally. Mm. Can we shun away from those opportunistic artists? Shun their meetings, shun their audiences, yeah. they will learn a lesson. Even, even when their art is temptingly good. Even if it is entertainmentally good. <laughs> when we shun them, yeah. because we see something good, the bright, the bright in this entertainment, mm -hmm. which should be social emancipation and national integration. Mm -hmm. Those who are opportunistic, those who want to undermine our society, those who are selfish, let's touch them, see them, <laughs> shun them, when you shun them, they will come back and we shall have an entertainment industry that is for emancipation, yeah. not for hegemony, yeah. not for, for privilege, yeah. but for, for uh, 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 social justice. Okay. So the society out there, the, the listeners, the citizens, the voters, let's use our power, our force of shining away from opportunistic okay. artists <laughs> and they will learn a lesson and they will also come back and mm. join us in the struggle for social justice in mm. national integration. Mm. And they yeah. have learned, they, mm. they, they, in, in some instances, I agree with you that if we shun them, they learn. Yes. That is why it is, for me, it goes back to the citizen. Do we have a case study. Yeah, the, the Tubonga now, now is the study. <laughs> if you recall the Tubong for, for a whole year, <laughs> not plus, even all year. You know, after the election, these artists were nowhere the on the radar. The entire time, the whole <laughs> entire time, even mm. when radio died, mm. you should have seen people. Mm. People felt for him because people loved him. But by that time, those people, they're so, yeah. so, so, they, they're so gifted. But they had gone down mm. because yeah. they had bongad. Mm. Yeah. But we should also it's shine away from tribalists. Yes. <laughs> we want the nationalists because yeah. this is a nation mm. which we all. It was by accident created by the British, whatever, <laughs> yeah. but it is ours. So if we, yeah, the population yeah. can also shun away from those who are using entertainment to promote ethnicity, yes. Yes. tribalism, yes. sectionalism, mm. then they, we shall also bring them back to be nationalists That's and true. sing nationalist songs and so music is that in and comment. that Tubonga now he was in not, Uganda and not in no, Uganda? No, no, I, I don't it can be in right. Uganda yes. but nationalist. It can no. be in Uganda yes. and, uh, and, pre, and privilege yeah. and can be in Uganda and social, social justice. justice. Because it's not Tubonga the now, the people who were yeah. closed out were yeah. not necessarily from any area yeah. at all. Yeah. And the, the problem wasn't which area the president comes yeah. from. It is the message. It was the message <laughs> that you cannot sell mm. a product that is actually known to the common interest and okay. common good. Is it for control mm. or for liberation? Yes. That is the issue. Yes. I haven't had the music talking about gender issues. Patriarchy. We need, we need music that will also undermine patriarchy because this country maybe, needs maybe. It inclusiveness. Mm. It has. No, 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 I would also mm. talk about this. Uh, instead of this, it instead of this stereotype because music. that oh, guy yeah. has been singing that music, yeah, that music. but they also that's where it mm. goes to understanding because I have seen women. I know like one of the the, 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 the women that I couldn't stand, I'm sorry, because this is also a society mm. that sometimes accepts polygamy. Mm. But I had Winnie Munyenga and from that time, even if you give me a, a free ticket, I would not go. And she was saying that she's feeling sorry for that woman because she was happy to be a mistress and she was actually empowering and encouraging our children to go and be second best. In music. In music. Art. And that's a woman. Yeah. But you, it's because she has a... And you being thing. moralistic and puritanical, <laughs> isn't art supposed to expand conversation? Well, for me allow the, uncomfortable issues. For me, the conversation is coming yeah. from they should um, also allow empowerment. And one of the people, women, mm. uh, and one of, they shouldn't promote patriarchy as mm. one of the things. And one of the people who, who does that is Waswa, Jamal. He's a man. But you see, a lot of the music, if it is if it is coming from the heart sometimes and it's not worried about markets, mm. it is also actually informed by their values and backgrounds mm. and everything. And care. you have to understand, for instance, when you say there shouldn't be tribalism, the women should be promoted. Women now are consumers. 
But the women who are consumers sometimes do not say that I don't want to consume a product that puts me down. I saw someone putting an advert saying, you buy this oil. Two women. Gulabi nerizigo, wejeko namakula. Namakula in the case of Kenzo and Namakula. And I am a woman and I'm saying, is anybody going to buy that? <laughs> but they knew they could get away because the woman, the ordinary woman, and this issue of actually women emancipation has not been organic. It has come mm. here, it has not been homegrown, and people haven't embraced it fully. And then mm. part of the people who actually try to undermine patriarchy, they do it once in a while when they've been paid. But how <laughs> does it come when so it is something you think about so it as NGO, but was, Jamal uh, is a son of a single mother. Was the Frigo Burns Jim Wang also one of those NGO paid? Uh, Jim, uh, how I, I would like to be guided. I, I would like to be guided how Jim pushes for women emancipation. I think the whole thing about anti-domestic violence and Probably this, uh, this relationship, we're, we're in this relationship on, on, on equal terms. But then there's also the whole thing uh, about Makulaga Kula Wakosebo Mumbeja and that whole Ganda thing yes. addressing princesses. But anyway, that, that's that's all. Uh, <laughs> well, that's appreciated because yeah. it's a play that actually mm. amplifies and yeah. elevates the status, the status of a woman. Of a woman yeah. Yeah. Mm. Have you noticed also that uh, uh, sports mm. is used for politics also? True. Yeah. For, uh, for, for emancipation? True. Even this uh, whole thing about uh, Black Lives Matter, mm. it was first challenged by sportsmen. The other ones who, 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 who took a need. Yes. They also took a need and the message went to their to the, to the, to the, to the the fathers who our uh, fathers who are in the state houses. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I would want to appeal to the music industry or the arts industry in general mm. uh, to come up and speak truth to power. Yes. Uh, uh, right. uh, but there is a question you raised about uh, like uh, why don't we allow everything to come and then people can choose that liberalism, yes. that liberalism which also is in the academia. That you can just have academics and the curriculum, and you just teach everything, and then people will choose. As a human being, you should have something that a campus that informs you. Mm. Are you for the public good mm. or are you for privilege? Yes. And therefore, you have a curriculum that is for social emancipation, mm. that for national integration, mm. not just teaching for the sake of teaching. Yeah. Even that one who claims is uh, liberal and not subjective or whatever is subjective in his own way, yeah. and that is why I think Desmond Tutu said in his famous quote that when you claim to be neutral between a, 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 a rat yes. and, a, and an elephant, yes. when an elephant has put its foot on the tail of a hat mm -hmm. and you right. claim to be neutral, yes. then the rat will not understand you. Yes. <laughs> so we must, as artists, as shapers of society, as agents of society, also have an idea that informs us and we pursue it. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, in society, you won't, have, you, you won't fail to have those who are promoting privilege, mm. but those should be shunned yes. so that we have a society that has got collective values for, for the public good. Identify those who are selfish. You know, when you are selfish mm -hmm. and you don't uh, uh, promote the public good, then you create problems. By the way, solitary animals get more <laughs> extinct yeah. than those which are so, united. Yeah. Sure. And in those countries today, where there has been uh, incidences of COVID, those populists who did not promote solidarity have led their country to suffer more from COVID than those which promote social justice and public good. Sure. So if we live in a society where we are not promoting the public good mm. and solidarity values, mm. then we, we might get extinct and those who promote solidarity values mm. are oh, survive. Mm. So survival mm. is not for individual fitness. Mm. Survival <laughs> is for those who are more so, uh, who promote solidarity and public good. And survival can be relative, eh? and I would like to talk about the issue of Bobby Wine. By mm. the way, I would like to say, not Bobby Wine, Bebe Cool. Mm. And I would like to say that for me, I, I like that he doesn't flinch and he is kind of honest about his support. Right. And he's also not making an effort to, to create an impression that he's doing it for common good. 
it is clear that it's privilege. By the way, he also comes from privilege. That doesn't make him any better, but society has actually thrown him out. So in as much as he's surviving in terms of money, is he has been actually isolated as an artist. And it is demonstrated in his shows and everything. So probably with, uh, with technology and buying airtime and everything is on air, but how is his conscience deep down? And how is he going to live post regime because it is inevitable that one day the regime might go <laughs> so all those are things but it is this society that has also said no to him let, and let me compliment there yes. that we have taken the artists those in the artist industry mm. as mirrors of society but i would also request them to be the conscience of society yeah, okay. you must be the conscience of society mm. in all you are doing mm. so watch we are also watching you as you watch us yeah. We are watching you and uh, gradually we who, are, who consume your products are going to boycott your products <laughs> yeah. and you pay the price for, 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 for being selfish mm. and for being so uh, at social for just minding about your past because we are in the market era. Mm, yeah. The market era has been criticized. Mm. You are selling your emotions. We know you are in the emotional cell. You are selling your emotions, but you are watch, we are watching your emotions because we want you also to be the conscious of society. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And right. that Thank is you. what where they are coming from. I also just wanted to say something which mm. is not building on what Mr. Andevesa has said, but you see, art can speak. Yeah. And art speaks. And it's sometimes the ability and the capacity of the masses to interrogate and interpret what art is saying. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the Mpen Koni song, because at that time, uh, I, I, I was doing, as a professional, not as a DP person, mm -hmm. but as a professional, I was doing communication for DP. And I remember the late seven is to come in and saying, this guy is going to beat us up in his next term. And people did not interpret that. Mm -hmm. But you see, the minute you ask from Penkoni, you can subconsciously say it, but you're it's asking from Penkoni, it's a stick, you're going to beat him, <laughs> and I tell you the next term, they beat us up. And I don't know how Savannah <laughs> knew it, but they That's really beat us up, walk to work. It was, but I mean, it's also John. understanding to interpret. <laughs> the listeners the the look, looked at the entertainment value, value yeah. of the look, message, yes. not the manipulation mm. or control value yes. of the message. <laughs> the message. So the population out there, yes. when you are listening to music, yes. go beyond entertainment value yes. and go to mm. the political value. Mm. And, and that political value should be informed by emancipation. Mm. Yes. We need to be and enlightened then we should not consumers. say that in Penkoni, I'm sorry, that in Penkoni, the president sang. Mm. Let us now also understand show business in politics. All because right. it is now an industry, and show business is an industry with creators. Mm. It is the person, Kawesa, who now came and created the song, mm -hmm. not the president. So I also thought that it is important. No, but for him, he was after money. Yeah. yeah, but for him, he was after money, but he created the song Shara, that now we are me. attributing to the president. Mm. So we should understand that Profit, being profit driven and politics and showbiz comes with other agendas and it is a whole industry and yet we are judging the individual, not the industry and the motive of the industry. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, it seems that even in a market dispensation, <laughs> there will always be consumer feedback. So the artists need to keep that in mind when they are creating. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, our time is fast spent, and okay. we are drawing to the to the close of our conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a question here from uh, one of our online audience members. Uh -huh. uh, it is directed to Serugo mm -hmm. Moses from Andrea Staltines. This mm -hmm. is uh, their Facebook ID. So they say, is it? Moses, mm -hmm. given the context in which artists and creatives work today, mm -hmm. possible for them to mirror and thus critique society, or is it almost impossible for them to go beyond hustling for their daily bread? So, mm -hmm. that dilemma between the economic mm -hmm. dimension of their work and mm -hmm. then the social justice responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just touch on that. That's a good I one. think, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. like the professor said, it's about um, uh, creating the balance mm. but uh, your first port of call should be the whole thing about you being a public good 
sort of um, uh, you know you 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 being a mirror for society. I want to imagine is what your first port of call, you know, should be. Um, uh, yes, the um, uh, aspects of uh, of of uh, of survival, and especially if you to look at it in these uh, COVID times, we are especially most people in the gig economy are finding it hard um, to survive. Um, uh, there is still a way um, uh, around that. I want to imagine it's about um, how you manage your resources, how you probably manage your money. Uh, but the first responsibility, especially if you're a, an artist, mm. which is why you also need to define yourself. Are you going to be a Mediyaliro Zenkola was the India artist, or are you mm. going to be a social consciousness artist? Mm. You know, I don't know if you can find a middle ground in that, but then you first need to draw that line okay. in that uh, regard. But there some have words. done it, right? Some have done it, yes, which okay. is why, I mean, Lucky Dube wouldn't be popular, mm. you know, if it wasn't for that. He was first a social conscious artist before the money started coming in, and then you have your tours in Uganda, and people are actually paying premium, you know, um, rates for your tickets. Makeba, all you know, those. Miriam yeah. Makeba, yeah. your, 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 your Bob Marley, who even after years, after he's passed on, the Bob Marley estate continues to generate, uh, you know, revenue. So seek first the kingdom of social Fairness. Justice, <laughs> and then everything else will be added unto you. Yes, mm. thank, thank you, you. Prophet Moses. <laughs> 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 Prophet I, 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 I want to leave it at that. All right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Uh, now, just a final, a final question for all of us, mm. and then we can give um, our closing statements, mm. and then a big farewell to our audience. So, this is an unprecedented mm. election because of the pandemic. Uh, the president and his advisors, I don't know how many, zero might be a fair number, mm. uh, decided that we are going to have digital or virtual campaigns. <laughs> now, uh, artists thrive on crowds. Mm. They thrive on uh, concerts and things like that. Artists also seem to have a comparative advantage given their uh, dot com credentials they perhaps have um, made progress more than traditional politicians in terms of engaging mm. the social media uh, audience now do you think that they are going to be benefited relatively by the digital nature of this election or they are going to be hamstrung who would like to go first? Mm. I want artists to first of all do their homework mm. because their precedence to so called celebrities or showbiz people mm. coming into the political arena. Mm. So, research on Ronald Reagan. What did Ronald Reagan leave as a balance sheet? Even with the whole Reaganomics thing, it may have been the 80s, yes, but research on Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was at the helm of. Uh, the fifth largest economy in the mm. world, I'm, I'm told. Res do your research on Ravalo Manana, who was a, you know, a music DJ, but he's now you know, the president of, um, Madagascar. of, of Madagascar. Um, uh, I want them to f do you know, their research first. Of course, they're living in interesting times, disruptive times, and I wish they would actually look at the whole disruption thing. Because, yes, take an example. Bobby Wine's concerts have been halted. But if you look at his concert last week, it was 30,000 viewers on YouTube. Imagine if he was monetizing that. Mm. That would have been Muogo for him already, mm. but his social consciousness message went out regardless. So take advantage of these new you know, spaces, um, uh, so to speak. If you're an artist, sorry, if, you, if, you, if you're a comedian, the national theatre space is not quite what you can use right about now, but you can find a way of leveraging TikTok, you can find a way of leveraging Instagram and all this. And given the fact that the population today is at your advantage, the people you're communicating with are like-minded people, and they're the ones who have the uptake of, of, uh, of, of, of these uh, you know, digital platforms. Take advantage of that, but then also be cognizant of the fact that they, they're, they're not that mass media 
mm-hmm. you know, in terms of, uh, of communication. Because if I'm not mistaken, we have like what, less than 2 million um, people on, on, on Facebook, you know, in, in a population, an adult population that is half of 45 million. So be cognizant of, of that and then maybe create a hybrid approach. And most of them don't vote anyway, they are apathetic. But then mm-hmm. then the, then then what? No, no. <laughs> but then but then the what? The no, but there there are people like my generation who yeah. also have this whole voter apathy thing. You're comfortable mm-hmm. with your one there is that whole one rule, one something, then two, yeah. then uh, three, then you have, you have okay, four four family, <laughs> there's father, mother, then two kids and all that. Mm-hmm. Still those people are also comfortable in their while in an apartment, I subscribe to DSTV and all that. I'm comfortable with the status quo. I don't want to upset the apple cut. Okay. Start appealing to people like me as well that I have an, a voter's card, but I may not want to go out to vote because I don't see any change, 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 change happening. Mm. Yeah. Uh, does any of you want to? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I want to say that by and large, mm. definitely uh, the digital campaign is, is going to disadvantage the artists. In terms of earning, okay, uh, but even in terms of mobilizing, because you can use art to mobilize the population, either mm. to vote or against a, a certain social ill mm. or political ill. So you, when you are uh, allowed to be out there and you meet the audience, <laughs> uh, you also educate the the, 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 the the emotions, the heart. You see, mm. this messaging which is on radio and TV as words and reading, that educates the, heart, the, the mind, does not educate the heart. Mm, yes. So educating the heart creates a big mass. People want even crowds, and they are going to be disadvantaged, certainly. Mm. And possibly those in the power, uh, I'm not only talking about the president, the MPs, and the, and the IOC fives, they are happy about the digital. Because mm. it will deny those who are already not yet known to use the artists for example, as one tool to mobilize people to educate the heart, mm. not necessarily the mind. They will leave you at the mind, but they are doing the heart. Yeah. However, I would want to say that that immobilization physically, publicly, is educating using hard power. But you can use soft power. Let, oh. them, let them use soft power. Yeah. Social media, and, but there are not very many people. Internet mm. penetration in this country is, is still very low, but at least where it can, yeah. uh, yeah. and even uh, record music, record the comedy if they want, and you can you just pass it around. Yeah. So you could also inform, create awareness, and since you artists are practical, in the process of being practical, you can also change this society for social justice and a national integration so do not lose heart completely mm-hmm. be innovative be imaginative and come up with soft power use your soft power to to help this country to critique what is the uh, weak in this country whether those in the government or whether in the opposition critique both so that we like i have told you that social trending of that poster of that young man <laughs> told somebody said you send you send me so that i can him. also go and eat <laughs> that was his slogan yes. now that slogan had a very big message critiquing the current mm-hmm. politics neoliberal politics or representative politics which has been now mere eating not serving the people so please mm. use the social uh, use soft power to salvage mm. what you can or even refusing the whole notion of uh, of, 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 of digital campaigns. Yeah. We should not have digital campaigns, in my opinion. We should uh, wait. We should postpone these elections. The, we should declare a set of emergency, postpone elections. It will be reviewed by parliament every 90 days so that you, the artist now, can now have more leeway even to earn a living <laughs> at a selfish level, at a self-serving level, yeah. but at the same time, mobilize oh, the population for the public good, for social justice, against hegemony, against privilege, against domination. Thank you. Okay. I imagine so, that um, person was using, it's our turn to eat. The Michelle are wrong. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> message. So, I'm going to ask you to comment on the digital. 
but also maybe to also now give your closing okay. statement, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. I feel yeah. that people have uh, satisfactorily, uh, my fellow panelists, mm -hmm. especially Mr. Mbilisa, has de dealt with, um, with the digital, although I'll give a few points. I also want to start to build up on where Moses talked, where he said uh, the artists need to actually study uh, the politicians, what is happening. Me, I would say, look at the political processes. Mm. Look at what is the challenge in this country, mm. the corruption, the issues we are dealing with. Given that your societal mirrors, that's where we need to start from. Everybody does not have to go into politics. Mm. But I also commend the ones who have gone into politics and actually <laughs> impacted on, on the positive aspects where people have actually mm. responded positively and responded to the needs of the people. So the ones who are going to And vote, participating. And participating. Getting them out of their apathy into... Participation. participation. Not being participated. Not participated. <laughs> yes. So that, that is also highly commendable and I want to commend you. But we all don't have to go into politics. Mm. Those who are going, go to serve. Mm. Yes, there are, yes, you might get good money and everything, but what is the common good? What are you going to do? Why did you in the first place join, the join art? There are people who have joined art because it makes money. There are people who joined art because they wanted to serve and they had a gift. That put aside, you also have to understand that politics is very expensive and costly. Now, pop culture and pop music mm -hmm. and pop art has a very short lifespan. And if you can look at a number of the artists, many of them built hotels mm. because they understood that they will, be, they will not be popular in the next, in the 10, next years. 10 years. Okay. So a lot of them are jumping into politics because it gives a good transition. transition. Because you see, politicians and artists all thirst. They have an unquenchable thirst for popularity, for being uh, in the status. limelight, mm. for the status, and of course for money mm. to maintain the now high life that they mm. have gotten mm. used mm. to. And politics in Uganda now provides that. Mm. How do we in Uganda start saying that politicians should actually stop being people who are highly paid? I think that is mm. another issue that we need to look into if we are to see these politicians. That is one of the things that I wanted to say. But you Ugandans, I want to appeal to you. Can you start looking at policy and principle? The people mm. you're voting, what ideals do they stand for? <laughs> what are they going to offer you? You can do that. You can do better than giving a person because they're popular. The media, radio is the most effective medium mm. because it reaches everywhere. Can you give space to people who don't have money? Can you also try to push for the agenda? Yes, we have to make money, but there's also this other role that we have to play, and we need to do that. Then when it comes to digital media, I can understand when Mr. Devesa and the other politicians who are talking about that, who are saying we shouldn't go digital. I see where they are coming from, and I appreciate. And I actually know that the president, and that is what the fight in parliament was about, because Honorable Kadaga saw that the, the parliamentarians were squeezed out. They are people's representatives, and they, I know we are talking about money, but we have not looked deeper what was the agenda of Kadaga, not the 20 million. But Kadaga may have wanted, I've read, and Tamale argued that, and I agree, that the MPs, because this is a time of campaign, 2021 is around the corner, and you're isolating them, and you want your RDCs, the people who are going to push your agenda, the district people, those are the ones you've put on the task force. The parliamentarians are going to want to be there. That's, when, that's one of the few times, even when the yellow boys in parliament, boys and girls, did not support the president. Those RDCs are also aspirants. They're aspirants. <laughs> but you see, for now, they are pushing for his agenda, because they're not running for office. Otherwise, they would already have resigned or showed indicated signs. They are going, How do you know? Some of them, a lot of them are going to stay, mm. but they are serving the government of the day. And it is going to be advancement, it's going to be campaign on the public resource. So these people were saying, well, so I can understand when people say we are not prepared, but also what does it say about the politicians who have not been going to the people all along? Yes, mm. they've been suppressed, but we can't complain. And then, uh, Mr. Ndebesa, you know I was doing 20 years of electoral, of electoral commission. And part of what creates, according to, because I interviewed Akwabai, um, Commissioner Akwabai, and he was saying that part of the culture we have of going to people with musical, as one, 
created to commercialization of politics too has actually diverted people from the main points because mm -hmm. how Akwabai did it, he got all the politicians in a room, in a room <laughs> and they had to debate. So mm -hmm. if it's not a room, what are the other platforms that we have to create so that it's not this one person because of the, how much resources, but the capabilities. And if you look at the people who did the 1995 constitution, they were capable. It has a background. It was not Akwabai, it was the constitutional requirement mm. that all candidates go on a rally together since it was a movement system mm. <laughs> then mm. if you have money and you pay people to come mm. the, the the one who has no money he will also talk to them anyway well i would like to oh, yeah, that's true that's true but i will also that like, is institutional design true. i wish it could be designed the same way yeah, so that all candidates go together with and we see the one who has got the power then. To talk. With mm -hmm. digital, digital, we should also find ways of incorporating uh, that. Uh, then people should not feel discriminated. It is a fast. Yes, that's the, the, that's the thing. Sarah, okay. So, thank you. That, that's your final say on this. For idea. me, I appeal to Ugandans yeah. as a final say that mm. really it is in our hands. Mm. And it's not just the artists, it's all the politicians. We are talking about artists because they are popular. Mm. And we've seen, and one of our... Uh, the artists is running for presidency. But generally, let us look, let us look at... Who is it we are putting in power? Let us look at their ideals, the principle, and let us also look at how we are affected. Because we give popular people, but it is us to pay the next five years or so. And then some of those effects we may never recover from. Thank you very much, Sarah. Chiza. Uh, Moses, brief final comment. Yeah, um, mm. uh, for the artists out there that want to throw their hat in the ring, I most definitely support them. But like I've said, read upon other people that have done so, um, evaluate their mistakes and their successes. And then for the others that are going to be to comment at, you know, on the politics of the day, go right ahead. The National Theatre is closed, the arts are down, but there are all these other funding opportunities that are available that you can apply for and pretty much push, you know, I don't want to call it an agenda, but pretty much be the societal mirror that you were before COVID happened. Don't just sit on your laurels and then lament like everyone else. Arts lives matter. We're not, uh, the, the creative economy is not a luxury economy like it's been purported, mostly especially for the benefit of someone who sees the arts as a threat. Mm -hmm. The arts more importantly matter right about now in disseminating information and the artists should rise up and with their social consciousness bit. Mm, thank you for that clarion call. My Mr. take Deleza. is that mm. uh, when we are in this industry of art, let's have a good mix between the two agendas. There is the agenda of survival of making money mm. in the market, but there should also be agenda of conscience in order to build a nation, but not just building a nation, a nation with social justice. That is the agenda for the artists. <coughs> I would like to appeal to them that when you are in that, th those activities, make sure that you have got a good mix between the agenda to make money and profit, but also the agenda to create a better society. Two, I would like to appeal to those who consume the artists' products, that you also have an agenda. Do not look at only at entertainment value of art, but also look at emancipation value of art. And if you detect someone, an artist, whose agenda is purely self-service and opportunism, shun that artist so that you bring him back to serving the public good. So the artist's direction of social emancipation and national integration can also be achieved through pressure from the consumers of their product, such that we promote that art that builds society, builds so solidarity, but does not undermine society, that does not undermine solidarity, that promotes only privilege. Especially in a country like Uganda, which is not yet a nation, it is yet to be a nation state, and therefore the agency of artists can play a very great role in creating national integration. You can't have national integration when you exclude some people. We need inclusion, inclusion of people. Read. You artists read. For example, WUBOS, that Uganda Bureau of Statistics, mm -hmm. published st uh, poverty statistics, the poverty map of Uganda in 2019. Mm -hmm. 
They indicated how Eastern Uganda is far, far behind. Mm. Some places like Karamoja, 60% poverty. Mm. The, 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 the Mbare region, 35%. The Bukit region, 30 something percent. The Musoga region, 35%. Why can't you sing that one? Mm. Why can't you make a comedy out of that one? Mm. In the recent budget, the one has just been passed. Has Eastern Uganda been given affirmative action? They are behind. I, know my, I, I have posted on social media, I feel very bad that my town, Tororo, I call it my town, I'm a graduate of Tororo College. Yeah. It has been left out from being a city. Tororo is, has industries. Tororo is the entry of Uganda from the ocean. Mm. Tororo is an old town. Tororo is a, 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 has a station a, 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 of, of uh, the railway station. Right. It was left out. Why was Tororo left out? That is injustice. Why is the w w w minerals of Karamoja are being uh, exploited by others outside Karamoja? Hmm. Why can't the artists bring out these issues? I want artists to study, to read society, and help us as agents of transformation for the public good, social emancipation, not privilege, not undermining solidarity of the people. I wow. thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm equally grateful to uh, you both, gentlemen and lady, for doing an excellent job of really taking apart uh, this most topic of issues. And I'm quite certain that I speak on behalf of uh, hundreds out there who have been following us and who will be able to access this recorded conversation when I say that uh, we are grateful uh, for your insights and your thoughts. Very provocative and certainly very enlightening. Uh, so I would like to thank our audience that has um, stuck with us. Thank you for tuning in uh, to this 256 Dialogue. I would like to remind you that 256 Dialogues is an initiative of the African Studies Bookstore which is supported by the Frederick Abbott Stiftung. And uh, we would like to thank everyone who has been part of the organization uh, that has technically made this uh, possible. So we thank you very much, and we wish you happy and successful electioneering. <laughs> I've been managing. Digital? Yes, digital, <laughs> or otherwise. <laughs>